Welcome back to another view by Nate Nat. Today, this time around, a quick update on my 55 solar watt array. Yes, it's now a 40 solar watt panel and it's a 30 watt solar panel. This guy is pointed normally to the east where the sun rises. It's somewhere between that street uh, light pole and the palm tree. The way the sun is now, it's aim, it's heading towards the west. The sun normally is about there ish. So the west panel is 40 watts, the east panel is 30 watts. Both of them hooked up to a bed, uh, one 105 watt deep cycle battery, as I alluded before. The two panels here, they are it's an upgrade because of the 40 watt panel, 40 watt panel that stepped up. This deserves its own bureau. It's for the, the lights in the storage area that we normally keep the wheelbarrow stuff and so forth. So let's go down and then I'll paint the picture to this madness. Oh, before I go, the bed, uh, the bricks are there for two purposes, to hold them in position. Because normally throughout the year we do experience some strong winds. I don't know, maybe that's the reason why Vanduk is called Vanduk. I don't know, that's just my theory. So the wind from all directions, north, south, east and west, is held in place by those two bricks. It's on the roof, so not a lot of folks get to see it, except for my neighbors. So let's go down and I'll paint a picture which is more clear than what's going on right here. Uh, before I do that, uh, the yellow, which if any of you have panels that turned yellow, can you kindly comment, put in the comment section down below and explain to me why it does that. This panel is no older than 6-7 months and it's already giving off some yellowish spots. But the power output it's, it's still consistent. Okay, let's bounce. Now whenever uh, ratings are given for solar panels, the assumption is this bottle is going to be representing the solar array. It's assumed that the sun is perpendicular. Sorry about that. It's at an angle. We do a quick adjustment. It's normally assumed that it's perpendicular to the panel and the temperature is normally around 22 to 25 degrees Celsius. And it's a reason why I went with a dual setup. So what I'm gunning for, uh, I'm, I'm just going to choose random numbers here to, to, to help illustrate my, my target for this video. Let's say the sun is like this towards the panel. One, two, three, four. And that's and that's uh, based on those metrics that I decided to to use as a rough estimate. Uh, let's go to the paper. I'm sure it will make more sense that way. This graph is just an estimation. This is purely based on estimations until I get hold of measuring instruments that can paint a more accurate picture. So let me not digress. So this is the graph that I want to show you to help paint a picture for what I why I have the system set up the way I have. On the y-axis we have the wattage of the panel and then on the x-axis we have the, the hours of daylight and then we can observe here's a peak so the sun normally rises at around 8 am at least for me it depends on what your setup might be at around 8 o'clock there's some sunlight hitting that panel so it could be a bit earlier but of course the season we're in winter now so the sun does take a while to hit the panels, but let's say for argument's sake, this is how a general solar day looks like. Starts at 8, reaches up to peak, it should be 40, or at least according to the salesperson, it should be 50. Quick correction, the back side of the panel reads 50 watts. Pause it, read the details if you're interested. The front of the panel reads 40 watts. So, Mr. Salesperson, uh, what gives? I'm still willing to stick to my calculations of the 40 watts. Okay, you can continue. I know I have a PWM charge controller, so if it were MPPT, the, the graph would have looked a whole lot different. Peaks out around 50 and then it wanes out to uh, between 4 and 5 p.m. in the evening. That would have been true, or potentially is true, for the single solar setup. Another graph that is not to scale and that is not really accurate, but I rather want to go with something very close to that. So in this this graph for me, we see that the 30 solar 30 watt solar panel is pointed to the east, and then the 40 solar 40 watt solar is pointed to the west. So the two peaks is what I actually have in mind. 
when I went for this. Of course, uh, Solar Tracker, more moving parts, more maintenance. Uh, no, this is my ideal setup. If I had gone for maybe a wind turbine setup, then I know there would be maintenance in that regard, making sure that the cables are properly adjusted. But uh, let me not get sidetracked. So. This is just now to make sense of those two graphs. Uh, again, it's based on theory. It, uh, it's based on my best case estimations. So the target, say, let's say the, the panel that points to the east is 30. And according to the graph that I just illustrated a few moments ago, I'm looking for the best four angles that produce those close to the 30 watt or the potential of that solar panel. The true, it's true for the 40 watt panel that's pointed to the west. So let's say in theory I can produce 280 watts a day. That is DC power. That is no inverter that's attached to the solar panel, which is my case. There's no inverter in attached to that. I'm just dealing with 12 volt setup. So generally I want to use 30 days because it's an average. I know some days have 31 days. I know February leap year has its 29 days, 28 days for any, but let's stick to 30. So in theory, this is the amount of power I should end up with, 8,400 watts. That is to say 280 watts a day, assuming we have sunlight back to back to back to back. And mind you, we do have days or weeks, not really weeks, I will say days back to back throughout the course of the whole year, whereby it's cloudy, quite cloudy in, in, in the heart of the capital, right here in Namibia. So a reason why I also went with the reason why I also went with this is to at least make sure, let's say if the morning session is heavy cloud, very, it, there's a lot of clouds uh, during the morning session, meaning to the east, then the west would make up for it. Or if it's vice versa, let's say there's a lot of sun in the, a lot of cloud coverage in the evening, then the east would make up for that. And mind you, <coughs> mind you, the power that we use during the day, does, it doesn't come close to that. Now, it's considered that if a flood lead desert battery is 80%, that it's around 12.4 volts. They have different graphs, but the 12.4 volt is what I want to go with. I came across a video, a video one time that stated that when the battery is around 12.4, a well-maintained battery, then that's 80% 80, 80 state of charge. That's something I'm willing to go with until I have the instruments in its place. But let me not get sidetracked. Uh, let's go over to how the system is set up. I, uh, we dealt with the theory. Let's go to the practical side of things. And this is how it plays out. I had an unboxing of this 20 amp solar charge controller. I just want to give the bullet points on this before I continue with the video. Just a quick summary on this video as we progress during the video. This is a 20 amp solar charge controller. It's rated for it's 12, 24 volt. So it's good for 12 volt setup and it's good for the 24 volt setup. I currently have it under the 12 volt setup. This feature called from sunset to sunrise. Uh, I might put the, it's a proper name for that in to, right here at the bottom. It's awesome because what I'm using that for is this device. Get all those suckers captured. It displays a UV light. It's somewhere way up there. And I normally have it set for two hours in the evening. Given that it's winter time, the mosquitoes are normally not that active. This feature works excellent. So if you want to use it for something, let's say garden lights, this, that was, this would be perfect. If you have a setup that is less than 100 watts, or I, my best guess for 24 volt setup, say 200 or even a 100 watt uh, setup if you have like two, let's say, let me, let me use an example. Let's say you have two 80 watt solar panels. You have it in a 24 volt configuration. This should do very well. This should, this, this should work perfectly. As for charging, uh, I believe that this is 0.5 amp because I had it tested on my phone and the power output was 0.5. The app I used was the Ampere. I believe it's also found on Google Play Store. It's good for trickle charging, if I can call it, or slow charging. Let's say it's called, uh, it's good for slow charging. I have this uh, power bank. I scrapped a few laptop batteries, uh, stripped it of the 18650s. Uh, the circuit board, uh, 
was from a previous power bank is why I had yeah, one of those uh, lipo batteries inside and I slapped them together combined them together this is another one uh, let's see the underside of it there we go another set of 18650s this, uh, this, uh, the, the power output of this is very similar to this DIY custom solar setup of mine yes I it hasn't seen a lot of action lately because of the solar panel but I have future plans for that. Back to the dual solar setup. This is responsible for the sun setting in the west. And then we have here the 5 amp solar charge, focus charge controller. It's a 12 volt, 24 volt solar charge controller. It's responsible for dealing with the 30 watt solar panel. And then we have the 105 amp deep cycle battery right there. I keep these air cartons over the cells, over the caps. This is to ensure that dust will have a hard time of and so to wrap it up the 20 amp solar charge controller and the 5 amp charge controller is all a part of my updated system so i believe for 40 plus 80 that's around say 120 watt if i can, if my math doesn't betray me and the way it's set up presently i love it uh, this this guy used to be the voltmeter until I found something better. I'm, I'm having plans for this, but it's now still currently sitting in limbo. I might remove it, I might leave it, but thank you guys for watching it this far into the video. See you guys in the next one.